evening, Trent Tobago. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACTN. It's always a pleasure every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 to 9 where we talk sports. And we are going to be doing that tonight. Um, before I introduce my guests, I just want to say a big shout out to all the loyal uh, scoreboard fans. You know, wherever you are, you know yourself. Thank you very much for supporting the show. Because of you, we keep the show running every Tuesday evening. Tonight, we're going to be discussing sports in general. And from time to time, you have seen this face on this program. And uh, again, he's here with me tonight to talk sports. And it's none other than... Uh, Dennis Allen, hey. rep 868CEO, um, you know, the man who knows his sports. Um, Dennis, it's a pleasure. Always. Welcome always, again. Always, yeah. So much has happened in sports over the last um, couple of weeks and days. West Indies getting licks, the football team getting licks. And the big news, the separation between Atto Boland and Khalifa Senford after five years yeah. And uh, no one knows what the reason behind, you know, because a reason wasn't really given yeah. as such. All we know is that she's taking some time off because of injury, and that was it. From where you sit, and mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. I'm sure that you have come into contact with Khalifa and Ato, and you spend a sufficient time around track and field. Um, what's your whole view on, 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 on this? Um, well, you know, um, Thanks for having me again, yeah. and um, just a shout out to all my viewers on mm -hmm. Rep 68 TT Game Plan, you know, because we don't always watch it on, on TV, yeah. we watch it on the YouTube channel, so your fellas, click and like and, and subscribe to George's channel, because this is how we do it, right? Yeah. This is how yeah. we Rep 868. Mm -hmm. um, but you made a very important point, you know, five years together, um, from scratch, yeah. Atto Bolden, and Khalifa Sinford, she was his first project mm -hmm. and quite successful project, I must, I must say. And he used or was able to use that template to build his new charge, uh, Brianna Williams. And I think over the last year and a half or so, maybe even going back two years, you would have started to see some of the issues that might have reached to now Mm -hmm. shaping up. Now, I can't presume to speak on behalf of the athlete or her coach. Yeah. So I can only say what I've seen in the newspaper, what I've seen online, and what I've can, and, and I can speculate, but I don't want to be harmful in my speculation. Yes, yeah. It seems as though Khalifa and Atto Bolden, that, that, those roots of, the roots of that separation were planted maybe about two months ago. Um, there have been a lot of back and forth um, coded messaging on their social media. I follow both of them. I follow uh, Brianna as well on social media. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of coded language in their social media. I can't speculate as to what it is and what's behind it. Mm -hmm. But all I can say is this. Um, Khalifa is injured. She said this uh, to both the TTOC. And the entry is, she basically has said that her Achilles is injured and she is withdrawing from the rest of competition for this year. This message would have gone out to entry is maybe some weeks ago, mm. um, but had nothing to do with this split. Mm -hmm. As far as this split, she has not made any statement whatsoever. So how do you put all of that into, okay, as a fan, as a journalist, as media, what do you do? You wait until the young woman speaks. Yeah, Atto yeah. has spoken. Mm. Um, you've spoken to Sportsmax. Now, you ask yourself, how did Sportsmax get that story? Did it fall out of a mango tree? Obviously, yeah, 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 somebody yeah. called somebody. Yeah, yeah, right? And yeah. if they called Khalifa and she didn't have a comment, it sounded as though she didn't know anything about what was going on. So, today is what? <laughs> First of July, <laughs> let's give it a couple of weeks and see what else shakes from that same mango tree the story fall out of. Um, for right now, though, mm. Khalifa would have been featuring on NACAC under 23, uh, Pan Am Games, and uh, the World Championship team, mm. providing that she would have qualified because the only one that she would have been maybe eligible before Open Champs, which is at the end of mm -hmm. July, would have been maybe Pan Am Games. Right. Right? Khalifa is the number two ranked 
in the IWF ranking, but she's around the seventh or eighth, maybe even lower than that, in terms of her season best times. There are some women who would have taken her spot in that final based on today's okay. form. Okay. But of course, you don't train to run slow. You train yeah, to run yeah, fast. Yeah. So obviously, she would have looked at her training and made her own determination as to where it's going. Mm -hmm. And maybe, like, like young people say, she needs to put the whole thing on rice yeah. <laughs> and see if it but goes better. But do you think that over the five-year period, mm -hmm. do you think that she was progressing in a positive way? Because we see in... Um, in 2014, in the 100 meters, uh, it was down from 11.86 to 11.56 or, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. right, in 2017. She would have had a, 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 a career best, a personal best of 11.06. 11.06, yes, yes, 11.06. Right, but that was some time ago. Mm -hmm, that's 2017. Right, since then she had injuries. Mm -hmm. So injuries is a major issue here that needs to be un understood as well. Mm -hmm. um, what causes in injuries? What causes an injury on your Achilles? Um, I'm not her physiotherapist. I can't speculate, and I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. But she did say she's injured. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you can't run your best when you're injured. How bad is the injury? Is it going to be a career-ending injury? Does it require surgery? Only time can tell, and mm -hmm. only the young woman can speak on that. Um, obviously, Atto has a uh, obligation to all of the athletes in his program but one of them is running some some new world records yes, we saw and here in the, um, records, in the right? jamaican um yeah. invitational fishing third behind um shelly and uh, elaine right yes. so obviously brianna williams is a special kind of athlete and uh, before the show we were talking about that kind of thing mm -hmm. you know how often do you see uh mm -hmm a young woman at 17 going sub-11. You mm -hmm. don't see that a lot. As yeah. a matter of fact, what, three of them, uh, two of them, sorry, mm -hmm. um, in the under 20 world record, gone under 11. So it is, it's very special. Yeah. So obviously, Atto has to focus on creating up opportunities for that very special athlete. I've seen her run, I've seen her run at, at Kirfta is, I mean, yeah, she, she, amazing. She, yeah, she's amazing. amazing. You know, I, yeah. I was and she has been consistent, eh? Yeah. But um, does this mean that Arthur could only coach one person at a time? Well, you see, that is what you're hearing um, on the ground from some people in quarters. They were saying, <laughs> you know, like, Arthur have a goal mine in Brianna, like he want to spend more time. You see, all these things will, will come up because nobody has given a clear-cut uh, explanation regarding the split. Right. So, you know, especially the Trinidadians, we like to speculate. Mm -hmm. So... If you watch Brianna, if you watch Khalifa, even Sarah, who was also in the program, um, you have other athletes as well. If you watch each of them, they're very different physically. So, obviously, Khalifa's older, she's 21 now, Brianna's 17. The way you would train an athlete uh, it, it, it's different, right? So if you have somebody in a program five years and they're building and they're continuing, mm -hmm. obviously you're looking at 2020 Tokyo as, as your, your main goal. And, and, and on, on the steps in between there, you'll be looking at Doha because that's the world championships. Mm -hmm. She's a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you would be, be, be marking all of those mile, mile, mile posts mm -hmm. along your way. But then Brianna pops up, what do you do? It's not like only one person could be on the track in Miramar at one time. So obviously, as a professional coach, Atto would be able to, one assumes Atto should be able to mm. develop a program, one to suit Brianna, one to suit Khalifa. Mm. And the two of them should not necessarily be identical. So although they train next to each other and they would run against each other in training, it's two different programs. So this idea that Atto picked the bigger, the, um, the faster horse, mm. what? Atto had the two horses. It's two Atto, Atto's two horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he didn't have a yeah. pick. It wasn't mm -hmm. a lottery. So I don't know. I want to give both the athlete and her former coach the benefit of the doubt Until that they, they would have been um, sincere and and honest about their own approach to Khalifa's career. And um, let's see what happens in the next couple of weeks when the young woman makes a statement mm -hmm. and. But I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, George. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that there is a lot more going on. Mm. I would not be surprised at all.
But at this point, let's go with the statement that she issued several weeks ago she's that injured. she's injured mm -hmm. and um, she's taking her time off. Do you see this hurting Trinidad where, where women is concerned in upcoming events? Because, okay, we have uh, Michelle here, he, we have um, um, Kellyanne. Let me get to the iPhone. Kelly, <laughs> Ke Kellyanne. Um, right. But Kellyanne has been around for a period of time. Right. Seymour Hackett and them has been around for a period mm -hmm. of time. Um, are we going to miss Khalifa as one of the young upcoming um, athletes who we were expecting to take over the, the baton from the Kelly and the Simo Hackett and carry us further? Well, right now the number two ranked by performances this year is Mauricio Preto. Um, Simo Hackett is number three, Kamaria Dumarant is four, mm -hmm. um, sorry, fifth. So Khalifa's performance is marginally better this season mm -hmm. than Isla Stanislaus and Aquila Lewis. Okay. So uh, they're both going to be over at the, um, the Pan Am Juniors mm -hmm. and I expect a lot of things from them. They're both very, very strong athletes. Um, Isla Stanislaus didn't put it all together for Kirfta Games and I'm pretty sure she was very disappointed not in her performance because I saw it on her face, she put it out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But sometimes you just run flat and whatever happens, you just deal with it and come back the next time. And the last time I saw her at Junior National Championships, she was blazing. So, so maybe it's an opportunity sure. with this whole scenario yeah. here for the younger ones to come and, and, yeah. and, and, let, and let, show. Let me, let show. me tell you who's going to be stepping into whatever shoes are missing um, there. Uh, you have, um, you would have, let me get, Shidniqua Bascom is coming up, uh, maybe not, not this year, you know, because she's still very young. Um, but don't tell them that. <laughs> yeah, Janice no, yeah. Spinks is mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. very much in that mix. Um, Shaquilla Walcott, uh, even Teja Badal, Leah Bertrand. Right, so Naomi Campbell. Mm -hmm. And these are young athletes who are, they have other athletes who would have just returned from um, scholarship, mm -hmm. who would have just finished their scholarship. People like um, Cyan, Joseph, you know, so Cyan is trying to get back in shape and, and put it all together. Is it difference when you leave a school where you're just, all you have to do is show up and run. Well, mm -hmm. Maybe I'm, I'm trivializing yeah, the yeah. struggle of an mm -hmm. NCAA top elite athlete. Mm -hmm. But um, certainly it's, it's not a lot of, of adulting. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be there. That, the end of July, it's going to be eight young women who are going to be putting it on the line. Khalifa St. Fort is not going to be there mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. We have to look at the, uh, the, the eight women who will be there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be trying to dethrone uh, Michelle Lee. Kellyanne has <laughs> some stuff she want to mm -hmm. resolve. Although, like, it's obvious she's closer to the end of her career than the start. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Kellyanne ain't done. You know, Simone and Dunn, you know, Kai and, and Kamaria, Rhea Thomas, they're not done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this idea of the young girls coming up, what about the, I don't want to call them old girls because they ain't old, but yeah. what about the ones who are established and who are running every week? Yes, yes, you know, yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. You have to move them out of the way. In, 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 yeah, right? in, yeah, in order to. You have to move them out of the way before you could claim your spot. Mm. And... Um, Zakia Denun, uh, Mauricio Preto, those are two people who I think would factor mm -hmm. and, and maybe compete for a podium spot, you mm -hmm. know. Um, Zakia and uh, uh, Mauricio, I think Mauricio just finished, I'm not sure. Um, so she could definitely be looking at a, a pro space in, in a, a lane in Doha. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of opportunities for young sprinters. Um, some but of but, but, but as I said, they have to be thrown the Kelly yeah. and the You got to get out of my, yeah, if yeah. you want this seat, yeah, you got to get you gotta come and take yeah, you take me out of the seat, yeah. you, know? you know? That's why mm. they give the, the medals at the end of the race, yes. not before on paper. Yes. You know, so enough respect to Khalifa. She's shown that she is a class athlete. She mm. is a pro. She went pro out of high school. How many people could say that? Yeah. 
but yeah. you know you have to run every race okay. and we, this is a tough race we need to take a break when we come back we want to talk a bit about the Panam games that is coming up and, sure. I, and we have um two former athletes who will be calling in to give their um their little two cents so viewers you are viewing scoreboard here on actn we'll be right back after Don't this go no short break <laughs> don't go anywhere we'll be right back <laughs> Now changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. But, but my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Call it by not some winner. You know, all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David, and I'm your host. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard here on ACTN. I'm here with uh, the CEO of Rep 868, Dennis Allen. And we're talking sports in general. Um, we have started so far talking about the Khalifa St. Ford and the Atto Bolan, um episode. Mm -hmm. But as you said, we have to wait until both parties make whatever statement then to come to conclusion as to what we have in. Um, we want to take some time now to talk to... Um, we Jamal? have someone on the air, Jim, Jim. Jim, Jamal, Jamal James. James, former Trent Tobago athlete. Yeah, Jamal. Because we want about the upcoming Panam games. Yeah, Jamal. Jamal was one of the coaches over at um, yes at at Kirfter Games. Mm -hmm. and the conversations that we had in between events and in between sessions. Jamal is a, a resource. Yeah, you know he's a. Jamal, you're on the line? Yes, I did. The audio is very low. I'm very Hello? Muffled, actually. Hello? I, I'm not sure if I hear No, but, we're, not, um, we're not picking up Jamal as yet. Yeah, so basically what we're saying is Jamal is a resource that, I mean, he's highly... Yeah, hello? Yeah. Yes, hi, George. Yes, Jamal. Yes. Welcome, welcome to Scoreboard. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Good to hear from you. I have um, your good buddy here. Um, hey, what's up, man? How are you doing? Rep 868. We just want to talk a bit about, um, first, before we talk about your, your, your first stint, I think, was with the Kerfta um, athletes. Um, how, how, how was that experience for you out there with them? And who was some of the very, very good. Very different being a coach right. being an athlete. Um, I went to four Kerfta games with an athlete. Mm -hmm. And you see how much more work it is being a coach. You always have to be plugged in, um, paying attention to little things, making sure the athletes are getting warmed up on time, listening to the call room thing. So it was very, you, you have to be very focused. That's, that's the word I would use. But it was very rewarding to see the athletes do well at the end at least yes, they're on personal best. And some of them leave in the country for the first time, actually. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And, and, you know, Jamal, you, since then, um, and probably before that as well, uh, you know, you could talk on that as well. But um, since then, you you picked up two young athletes um, in your camp um, as a, a not necessarily a, a track club coach, but a coach and consultant. Um, Camille Lewis and Christian Mirage, um, middle middle distance, uh, long sprinters, we don't well, know. I, I oh, talk to me about those two young athletes. Well, I, I wouldn't actually say they're part of my camp. What happened was, after the correct the game, I spoke to their coach, Kenrick Williams, who was still fully their coach. Um, and I, you know, started just, you know, helping and advising them on some tips that they could do to further their terrain. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very funny space to navigate with, with our, our track and field landscape with the club system. And, you know, he, he, I want to point out there that Mr. Williams is still their coach, but and I right. helped and advise with a couple of workouts. And, you know, they ran well, and I think the work they were doing at Silver Bullets is paying off well yeah. to the three of yeah. the but it got her that far, so certainly, you know, th that needs to be rewarded and, and uh, acknowledged as well. Um, so obviously, we have some issues that, uh, like for instance, George and I were talking about the the, the seeming lapse in, in the production of uh, 109 second 100 meter runners, um, sub 10 runners. Um, 
um, you know, looking around, we see that problem, not just in Trinidad, look at Jamaica, the Jamaica National Finals was only one sub-10 runner, you know, you are Blake. Blake. Um, you you want to talk about this sprint factory yeah. that we maybe don't have, but might possibly have? What what are, what is going on in men's sprint in Trinidad and Tobago right now? Um, I think we should have some, some context, uh, if you'll give me a bit to Of course. It. Um, we have never really produced locally that is nine second guys. All our guys, you look at even Richard Thompson when he was running as nine second recent, he was at LSU. Mark Williams was at Auburn University, Arthur Boulder, and trained to John Smith in LA. And the conversation, you know, we should be having, how do we get there to produce them locally? Right. But I, I think it's a little bit disingenuous for us to say, well, you know, well, we're not producing nine point guys. When in reality, all the guys who have ever run nine seconds, I'm, I'm sure there may be one that I'm missing. But everyone who has run nine seconds from from that test and blood month when he ran his nine point eight, which he's still training in the states in Florida. So it, it, it's a it's a, a situation where we have to come together as a, as a country and a, a, a track and field fraternity and try to figure out how to get there. Um, Excuse me. It, I think in terms of local men's sprinting and sport in general goes through cycles, you know, and, and that's that's very natural. The, the U.S. men went through a, a very big drought for a while when both and Richard and those guys were dominated. The U.S. men weren't as strong, and now Trinidad and Jamaica, you know, we have a little down period. And, and that's sport in general, you know, I'll use a football analogy. Um, Liverpool, they are on the upswing now. Guys of a older generation from the 80s and 70s remember Liverpool being dominant. And then in the 90s and the mid 2000s, Liverpool was, you know, just a good team but not forceful. So I made that point to say that it's this is part of sport and sport goes through peaks and troughs. And right now we are in the valley and we have to recalibrate and figure out how do we get there consistently. Well, be, be, before I let you go, um, I was talking uh, earlier on um, being the coach of the youngsters at the curve, uh, um, you know, the Panam Games is coming up shortly. Who are some of the young athletes that you have seen that you feel should be given an opportunity to make that trip or to be part of upcoming um, events? Well, the, the teams were selected already. Um, I know Christian Marie Seville um, is going to be running the 400 there at the, at the, at the NACAC on the 18 championships this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and on the 23 championships, you have Jared Elcock, who has been running very well. He ran 10.3 this year, and he's going to be NACAC on the 23 championships. So Pan Am Juniors, the team was selected already also. Um, and I, I think overall, we have a very young track and field I guess, team right now, uh, in a couple months or years, we should see some improvement, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because actually track and field has been um, on the top of the agenda for a couple of years now. We have been performing. Yeah. Well, very much so, and, and that's, and I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that because that's the, the, the narrative I would like to, you know, to push and, and say as much as, you know, people think and have this mindset that we aren't performing well, in the world-class landscape of track and field, Trent Dancer because one of the most respected countries in track, and it's very strange when, you know, I walk around locally here and I talk to people and say, what's going on with the athletes, you know, why are we not performing? That's what I hear on the street, but if I'm in Europe or somewhere else in the world with a Trent Dancer jacket on, the amount of respect Not I get from yeah, 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 yeah. the Trinidad yeah. athlete is mm -hmm. unfathomable, and track and field has been doing this country very well for a number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamal, I also want to touch on you on, uh, on your other hat that you're wearing, uh, the promotions that you have, some exciting stuff coming up for Open Championships. Um, I know that uh, you're working with the, the association on that, so you want to talk about some of those um, things to get some of these uh, sports uh, scoreboard fans to come out to, to yeah. Open Champions. Champs? Yes, yes, for sure. Um, well, you know, what we are trying to do is, is change the narrative again for the for the championships. Over the years, I always got the sense, this is me speaking to Jamal as a former athlete, that we made it seem like it at least had to be here. It was mandatory for them to be here to make a national team. But it's so much more than that. It's a celebration. It's our national championships. When someone wins a race here, they get the title, national champion yeah. of Trinidad Tobago. That in and of itself is a big title. Right. Um, when an athlete is going on the European circuit, they were saying lane four from Trinidad Tobago, national Jamaica champion, Kirsten Gledman. 
that in and of itself is a ring you you know it's, it's a yeah, title that you could turn your resume for if you like so let's come out and support these athletes Michelle yeah he is in good shape she ran 11.2 she's the reigning, reigning Commonwealth champion Jerry Richards already ran 20 oh I think for the year Kyle mm-hmm. Rio went 20 20.1 for the year um, and those are two world class 200 meter runners around the top 12 in the world and they'll be right here in Trinidad and Tobago so we should yeah. definitely come out and support these amazing athletes. Uh, before I let you go, um, and I don't know if, if Dennis has any final um, comments, um, questions to you, but I just want to uh, say um, the congratulations to you because, you know, I, I find this, um, I think it's time we see more former sportsmen and women come back into the sport and give back. You know, sometimes we see people, you know, at the end of the career, they just fade away and they don't offer anything back to the youngsters in terms of experience and I already want to, I appreciate what you're doing and I really want to congratulate you on doing a fine job. I know you you had promised to come on the show and do something leading up to the um, the championship so I'm expecting to, to hear more from you when you do um, come but in the meantime you're doing a wonderful job and congratulations. I don't know if Dennis no, has I, any I, final I just want to I just want to bookend that uh, Jamal is a, a very bright individual and uh, this is just the beginning. Um, Jamal I'm your number one fan, brother. Front row, screaming, jersey in the air. That's me, yes, man. Yes. Yeah. So thanks Thank again. Thank you very much, guys. I, 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 I know you'll be on scoreboard shortly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'll definitely try to make it soon. But thank you very much. And the goal is just to push turn down to be go for this team turn down to be go and that's the goal. So thanks for all the work you guys are doing also. Thanks All right, much. I might respect. Okay, guys. Have yeah. a good day. Yeah. Well, there we had um, Jamal James, former Trent Tobago athlete, 800 meters, actually. Um, a lot was said. Yeah. Right? And I think that um, when we have people like Jamal and even we expect to, to, to chat a bit with Ayala Hutchinson, when we have these people coming back into the sports, I mean, who better role model for the younger ones to have these, the, 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 these, these guys? And what is so good about it is it is not that the younger wives are getting the older, older set. They're getting an uh, age bracket, just a few years, that they could relate to. And these format, these could relate to them. So I think that is a, a, a plus. Yeah, and you know, a, a lot of the, the youth athletes, they challenge you in ways that it, if you weren't there, the lack of respect that is potentially there could be huge. So, you know, for an athlete like Jamal and Anayana, who we're going to try and touch base with in a few mm-hmm. minutes, um, those personal experiences, those personal victories and successes in their own career translates into a lot of respect from this youth generation today. Mm-hmm. And, and that is invaluable. You really cannot replace that kind of, of, mm. of respect. I did it, and when I went there, I look at my YouTube video, you see that? And it's not no black and white, green thing. Yeah, yeah, they respect that yeah. a lot. But as I mentioned to Jamal, um, Jamal, track and field has been really on the top yeah. in you recent know. years. Um, and I think that um, I don't know if we really appreciate I don't know if Trinidadians are really appreciative of what we have, mm-hmm. you know, or we just look for that one big achievement to come out and celebrate. But the achievements that is coming up before we hit the big one, you know, we criticize. Yeah, you know, it, it, Open Champs, I don't want to sound like if, you know, I, 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 I'm an Open Champs ambassador, but we'll have entry and CAA champions, we will have uh, NCAA finalists, we will have NCAA top ranked athletes, they'll be there. We'll have world ranked professionals, they'll be there. When, when you had to go and you're paying for a Diamond League ticket, these are the people you're going to see, these yeah. are the caliber athletes you're going to see. So the fact is, the stadium, the covered stands has what, about 5,000 seats? Come and find yourself one of those seats. Um, come and see, you know, a lot of times what you find is the Trinidad, not so much the Tobago, because I like to separate Trinidad and Tobago from the, because the two have two totally different sporting identities. Mm-hmm. Trinidad FM, those radio fans, they're the worst. 
The worst, 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 worst. So when you hear them drag the flag, where them? Every minute they want to call in and they, they use the, the, the Digicel and they bleed mobile top ups so, because half the time they get cut off, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they drag and the flag. Why? Come out and support now. Come and see that, for that, yourself. That's the next thing. When you, when you go to these senior champs there, I mean, it's basically a handful of people. Well, no. And, maybe it's not a handful. Well, In well, our well, Olympic year, the, the covered stands are filled, right? So that's 5,000 people. Right. But, 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 but what I'm saying is 5,000 in comparison with the amount was at the airport when Kishon won the gold medal. Yeah. That's why I say it's a handful. I mean, you, so you understand? There are, there are big gaps, mm -hmm. and we need to do a better job of how to translate those on-track and on-field successes mm -hmm. into uh, a culture where we can rebuild that sports, that love of sports, because it wasn't always so. Mm -hmm. In the 70s, 80s, even 90s, when I was in school in the 80s and yeah, 90s, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, schoolboy football yeah. was huge. Especially um, yeah. Southern Games. Yeah, you know, Southern Games, yeah. you know. Um, we, we, when my, the first year my dad took me to Southern Games, we end up in one of them little annex seats and, and you know, we carry a, a cooler, food, drinks, we, he make a macaroni pie and we had all yeah, kinds yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's the kind of thing because we made it a picnic. Yeah. Now you don't have that. Now you don't have that. You, you're seeing every weekend have five, six, ten boat ride. Yes. Um, bus ride, you go to the beach, you're seeing bus ride, you know, the alcohol, that lifestyle. That is something that is... That is now our culture. That's who we are. We respect the most. And, and you know, okay, how do we translate that into bringing people back to sports? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we take that economy? Because that's billions of dollars in that FET economy. Mm -hmm. How do we take that kind of support financially from all the corporate brands and put it into track and field where we can see a tangible return? Mm -hmm. Because, yes, people like... Caesars Army, Tribe, Bliss, all of these people. Yes, they're exporting a culture product, mm -hmm. and that is something that is, that, it has an economic benefit. But to whom? You know, when Kellyanne go, go out there and win, or, or when Michelle Lee go out there and win, that benefits all of us. When Kishon yeah, yeah. wins our Olympic medal, that benefits all of us. So we need to invest in those things so that we can empower those athletes, because look to recourse for it. Um, amazing young athlete, huge, huge, huge potential. And he's only just begun. This is first year in, in Mississippi State. So, you know, there are so many of these success stories. Right now, I track about 36 athletes on Google Alerts where I would be hearing whatever they do each day during the course of the year. Mm -hmm. And it's, and I'm not tracking everybody. I'm, and those are just track and field athletes. These are people who are pros. These are people who are in the top Division I schools. You know, the, the, the idea of when we perform well is not, it's not just mm -hmm. in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, the, guy, the guy saying we want to take a break. Yeah, we need to take a break. <laughs> when we come back, we should have Ayanna Hutchinson on the line. Um, so we we'll want to hear her. Um, her input in what is happening with track and field because as Jamal, she is also involved in in um former Olympian. Yeah, former Olympian, yes, and she's involved in track and field. Yes. So we're gonna take a short break. As I, as Dennis said, don't get up and move. We'll be right back. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard and ACT. And we were expecting to have Ayanna Hutchinson on the line, but so far we have been unable to make contact. We will try during the course of the remainder of the program. Well, we have touched on um, track know, and field. You know what I wanted to talk about? Yeah. This, um, this weekend, Friday, going there, the Calypso Girls. It's big women, but we call them girls. I yeah, don't know that's why. the um, but that's the hashtag. The, the, hashtag the, Calypso girls. Yeah, the, the netball. The women's netball team uh, mm -hmm. preparing to leave for the um, mm -hmm. for the netball world championships. Yeah. Um, three professionals, you know, Samantha, mm -hmm. Khalifa, and now Desta uh, Swift. She's just gotten a contract. Mm -hmm. The reason why they're doing well is because. These athletes have taken personal charge of their own performance, their own development. Um, obviously, there are systems in place that assist them, that 
allow them to perform at that high level. And you want to be able to, to say, okay, the team is doing well because netball is a team sport. Yeah. But look at the sports that are doing well. Netball, um, recently volleyball, um, you know who's coming up now? Archery. They have a. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. won a few medals, yeah. five medals at uh, uh, another junior archery tournament there, um, setting records, national records in the process. The reason these things are happening is not because corporate sponsors is just spreading money along. You know, um, that's an excess issue that we could talk about. But athletes need to take personal charge of their career. They need to be able to say, you know what, um, I am going to be excellent despite of, not because of a system, despite this, the system is rigged, the system is set up against you, the system is not going to be able to consistently produce excellence. But what do we do? Are we going to just sit back and say, well, she have this support and she had that sponsor, Serena, now getting a Wheaties box, the first Wheaties box, how old is Serena? Serena, just now Serena drawing pension, right? So. The, the, the attitude that we have needs to be adjusted. Yes, better could be done. Um, but look at, for instance, we were talking about Jamaica football. We were talking about how these women um, managed to qualify for the World Cup. Yeah, they got legs. With no help from, their, from the federation. Yeah, 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 they got legs. Yeah. yeah. How did they go about it? Did they create a vacuum where... Um, Corporate brands are uh, avoiding touching their their their, their um, brand because it's a toxic environment. Yeah. Or did they create an opportunity for people, like-minded citizens who have that kind of patriotic spirit to, and personal wealth to contribute? Did they create a platform, maybe a GoFundMe or whatever, whatever? You know, these are things that we need to take take um, observe and and take note of to see how we can now move it around. Um, there's a young athlete, her name is Diamond Thomas, so that is a Tobagonian. Uh, she's living over in um, Texas. Uh, she's a throws athlete. Uh, she wants to come back down here to perform at Open Champs so she can get an opportunity yeah, to represent. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are important things that people need to understand. She has a GoFundMe page. so. She's not coming out and saying, boy, this is so, so, so. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, the negative. Yeah. yeah, she's creating an opportunity where, regardless of what, you can tag on. And what if she wins? What if she, well, she's probably going to, she does hammer throw, discuss, and shot put. Miss Cleo and, and Porsche, so they're going to have something to say about the shot put. And uh, they're going to have something to say, Porsche certainly will have something to say about the discuss. But hammer throw? I, I would give it to Diamond. Mm. But, you know, she has to be here first. Yeah. And to help her get here, it's not a lot of money. It's 1200 US. Put it, on, put it together. You know what I mean? George, I'm here right now. Mm. <laughs> you know, the thing is, there are ways to go about getting to where you want to get. Financially, is it, is it, is, corporate funding is, 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 is it that, is dead that some of our athletes, we just want everything cap in hand? Why shouldn't we? CPEP workers get it. URP workers get it. The, the uh, people who um, pave the roads and they, tomorrow it have a sinkhole and he said they're getting it because what other brand has been grown from Trinidad and Tobago? Matooks, um, Royal Castle, <laughs> um, the, the um, NGC, Atlantic LNG. Mm. These are brands that have been grown, but yeah. most corporate entities are retailers they buy cheap and sell high that is what it is so they don't own the intellectual property they don't own a stake in what they're selling so if whatever top brand alcohol do sell today they drop it tomorrow they sell our next top brand alcohol and if it get too expensive it's too hard to get foreign currency they, they sell a cheap one mm -hmm. you understand and that is that is who we have as captains of industry in Trinidad and Tobago and the problem with it is no one has an ownership stake. All they want to do is take and take and take. There's no putting back. They only, they only put back. Because these same fellas will tell him, boy, we not no money, boy, but they're racing boats. Yes. Yeah, Every weekend, yeah. you know how much to put diesel in one of them boats? Real money, you know? So, but I can't tell you what I think you should do with your money. I should be able to make a convincing argument mm -hmm. in a business plan. Why you, why you should. Right. But yeah. then they don't take that on. You know, so sports is very easy to ignore. 
and it's become too easy for those brands to ignore it. But the same brands, the same people behind the brands, every weekend they, they have their, their, their licensed brands in a, a, a boat ride. Yeah, people yeah. wrapping up car on the highway every every Friday night, Saturday night. Oh gosh, man. You know something I, I, I saw, and I, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you, but I mentioned it to a couple of people before, at the IPL Cricket League in, 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 in there recently. Mm -hmm. During every break, <coughs> advertisements that come on with the, either the present or the former Indian cricketers mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that companies have taken them on as brand ambassadors to sell their product. So when you're looking at the cricket, you're seeing the Coley's, the Donies, everybody, right? How much bes besides um, Atlantic? How many corporate business, the, the Royal Banks, the, 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 the FCB, the, 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 these people, how much of them has taken an athlete and let that athlete be a representative yeah. for your company? Look at the names. Look, RBL, mm -hmm. they've, they've, they have brand ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Atlantic has brand ambassadors. These are homegrown brands. They don't they are not licensing other people's um, brands and selling it. And no knock on that. I mean, like I said, you know, your business is about risk. Mm -hmm. You balance the risk to make the money. So, okay, all right, we understand that. So you want to take less risk with a more established international brand, great. But you also have a responsibility. It is not only solely the responsibility of the government to sponsor sport. Because if you pull away um, NLCB, you pull away NGC, you pull away Atlantic, you pull away RBL. Who is really sponsoring Sport in Trinidad and Tobago? You understand? You pull away um, Beacon from, from Cycling. Yeah. All right? you, if you pull away those key brands, you see a, a major collapse in the, the funding Defi of yeah, Defi sport. Yeah. Right? So that deficit now has to be um, pulled together by the Ministry of Sport. But are we funding people's hobbies? No, it is not a realistic thing to go and knock on the door of every single taxpayer in Trinidad and Tobago so that you could go and practice whatever it is you're doing. But we can say, all right, you know what? You've reached a point where the excellence is obvious. So yes, you can now tap into the national trust because that is what government expended. The government didn't make a dollar there. Right? If it wasn't the government that you see here and you vote for, it would have been and they would have signed the same contract with the same international brand because the, the same contract with the same international brand because the government ain't making no money. Let's establish that. It's not government funds. It's state funds. And we are the state. Right? And this is a big difference that people need to understand. I don't have a mm. knock on the minister or whoever, whoever. They have a responsibility. Because when they get it wrong, we, I would be the first person to pong them. But when our athletes get it right, why is it so hard for them to get fun and to take them to the next level? Not knocking the entertainers, but do you ever look at when they have a concert, foreign or local, the amount of brands that you see coming out sponsoring this? Of course, because I used to do that too, right? I did Great Fed Weekend for 12 years. So I am very familiar with how, so, yeah. how much easier it is to go and talk to a beer brand or alcohol brand or, or maybe even a, a feminine products brand mm. that could gravitate to something that has 10,000 screaming fans jumping up and down. So yeah, it's different. So perhaps part of the, the responsibility is for the NSO is to do a, a successful uh, franchise from a business level, mm. not just from an event level. But the, the issue is if you get it wrong, your event sanction might fall apart. So maybe next time your international body, your global body may not give you sanction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you get it right, what is the difference? Do I know that does somebody in the stands really care that your measurement is within 0 0.002 of a millimeter? No, nobody really cares. 
But we want to hear that And Willie Wright jump a national record and he look good doing it. Mm -hmm. We wanna be we wanna see Michel Lee I he run a national record in the stadium. We wanna see those. But you know what? If you ain't spending hundred dollars to come in the stands, you won't yeah. you'll miss the whole thing. Yes. Because yes. Yeah. I mean, hardly any T V stations has come, so you mm -hmm. mightn't even see it there. Yeah. So maybe a phone video, somebody would be Yeah, yeah. I'm That's where we reach right yeah, now. Yeah. So the investment in sport has to come from all sectors. It is not just a uh, 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 make work thing. Look at the lawyers. Look at how much money you, you, you saw it in the paper. Billions of dollars yeah, for this. It's yeah, lawyer yeah. CPEP, lawyer yeah. URP. Yeah, Let yeah, me yeah, don't yeah, fool yeah, ourselves yeah, yeah. with what we're calling mm. it, mm. right? Because that is as much a raid of the Treasury as any other program. But you know what? We don't see an attorney who just eat a food, come and stand up on an Olympic podium so with the flag behind their back. We don't see that. We might hear that they roll over somebody foot in a, in a Porsche. Mm -hmm. And we might hear about those things, but yes, yeah, you know, yeah. that they didn't yeah, buy. Yeah. As, 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 as a touch on that note, quickly, if I can ask you, are you in support of that swimming pool in Lavantil? I love the idea. It costs four and a half or $4.9 million. It's a real expensive swimming pool, yeah, George. Yeah. I don't know if they'd ever ask me. I might have been able to get it done. Let me say it like this. <laughs> if I had built a swimming pool in Lavantil for $4.9 million, George, mm -hmm. all of we would have been driving BMW. You, photo, the camera guy, audio, everybody would have been driving BMW. Mm -hmm. I ain't seeing that. Everybody ain't by driving. But do so grand ben trace. Do you see it benefiting? Man, I shared a video. I can't remember the guy name, boy, but um, I'll send it for you, so you'll put it right here on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. Go and see that. And you see these young people, this is before it was completed, these young people in Sogran Chase, and they love the idea. I want to see an Olympian, Olympian come out of there, but I know it's going to cost maybe about $35,000, $40,000 a month to keep that water sanitary, to maintain that those premises, to keep that program in place, because you need to have programs. It's not just, it have a pool, so what are we going to do? Stand up and watch the pool? Yeah, yeah. A lot of these children don't know how to swim. Yeah. I could tell you that because they don't have pools to swim. You go swim in the little inflatable pool, you're buying price smart. Mm -hmm. No. So you might be able to float around and you might be able to have look nice in your Instagram post on a, a, a pool photo, but you can't swim. Yeah. So the first step is to get in these youth in these communities to learn to swim. Unfortunately, I heard um, Mr. Fitzgerald Hines talk about um, putting the next one in, in Lavantil. I'm um, sorry, in Mover. I would prefer that they build my old school or move a lab until before the pan next pool, because Sogran Chase is just over the hill. We could go in, we could go in Sogran Chase. And I'm not going to say that. And so maybe if, and move is close. Yeah, it's close by. Border, and maybe if line. we could stop mm. the, the borderline thing and, and, and stop the war, mm. move up, people could come and line with all the lab until people in all the lab until pool, and it would be nice and everybody would be cool, mm -hmm. you know? So the idea of separating the politics and separating the crime and the borderline communities and all of these different things from it. There are opportunities here. We have a lot of young athletes in the community and maybe this is all they ever needed. Certainly, I would feel really good if I had a pool like right next to my house. Mm -hmm. um, not yet though, mm -hmm. but um, it's a plus. It's going to be, a, a, it's certainly gonna lift the um, feeling of self-worth in that community in so grand, in so grand Trace and Lavantel. So, but do we need four, five, six, ten? No, we don't need ten community pools. We don't need that. So stop. One is good. Is it, is one it, is good. Is it, a, is it a standard size Olympic uh, size? Uh, Olympic size pool. I'm really not sure of the dimensions, uh, George, but you don't need all of that to train mm, yeah. for getting to that point. You need that to be a competitive mm. swimmer. But the steps between learning to swim at maybe five, six, seven, and being a competitive swimmer at age nine, 10, 11, they're huge. Mm. So maybe by the point in time, what you would have is a feeder system where you would now be able to say, okay, we've created this cadre of really outstanding athletic potential, and now be able to hand them over to people who are known as good quality competitive coaches, because we good. We just had CC Canwin last weekend or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we good, we know we good. We could produce good quality swimmers. So maybe now the Hills will have an opportunity to put their name 
on that, that the back of that um, mm. board, and you remember the board in the back of um, waterfront? Yes, yes, yes. The, yes, the yes. one they, they built, it, they, it looked as though they didn't have room for any anybody else. But maybe down on the bottom, we will put some lily lava until you two mm. get a chance to swim in that mm. pool in Sugar mm. Trace mm. this year. So maybe mm. 20 years from now, somebody who is like a real great, talented five-year-old mm. going to be cutting it up. I know we don't have much time, but before the, we went on air, you were telling me some breaking news. PSL, yes. fire on wheels, right. huge. Mm. By the time you watch this, mm -hmm. um, the website, pslfireonwheels.com, will be launching. Um, it would have been live by then. Um, so your boy T, of course, mm -hmm. we're going to be handling their media services. We're going to be handling um, the made for TV broadcast. Mm -hmm. We're hand, we have it right to the point where you can put in an IP address mm -hmm. and you can pull the stream. So um, I believe they're in negotiations with a broadcaster, but I don't know if ACTN want to jump in, mm -hmm. throw some money at PSL, mm -hmm. but um, it's going to be huge. You mm -hmm. know, the event last year, PSL Cycling on Wheels, yes, was a, a huge success a, last year. Yeah, it was a mm -hmm. UCI class two event, mm. this year is a class one event. Yeah. It means that you will get points for qualifying for Olympic mm. and World uh, Championships, and uh, that's huge. So expect to see some of the best talent in the region come into Trinidad, because the cost of competing and coming to Trinidad versus the cost of going to a trip in, in, um, in Europe or in Asia or in uh, Australia or New Zealand is huge. Compared to Trinidad, small money. Mm -hmm. um, we expect to see places like uh, Cuba national team um, being able to compete down here because of the cost. You know? Yeah, because, because, because when I spoke with them the last time on scoreboard, um, it, had, it was originally planned to happen in Arima. Right. Because the air condition of the cycle village room was malfunctioning. Two fans or not just? Yeah, two fans. Two fans. Right? Um, and I think it would have been highly... Not, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be... Not after your first year, you know, success and you are upgraded to go yeah. to asphalt. Nothing wrong with the asphalt because we had asphalt before. But yeah. I think that if well, you at, want to... At this stage in, in, it, in 2019, UCI in, has no interest in sanctioning an event on an outdoor 500-meter yeah. village. Yeah, definitely. It just makes no sense because who's coming to that? Yeah. Right? So they're not going to give you points for that kind of thing. It might be a stretch. We do have the kind of leverage, the kind of people in there who can make that kind of mm. uh, connection. But the bottom line is it's going to be in Coover. It's going to be at the National Cycling Center. It's going to be hot, mm -hmm. fire on wheels. Um, it's, it's basically two sessions each day. Mm -hmm. So it's two days. Morning session will be usually be qualifying. Yeah, and the evenings. Um, yeah. yeah. So what we're going to be doing different is um, like at a UCI event, you don't usually see what's going on in the morning. We're going to be doing highlights. Everything is just going to be blazing at you. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to miss a thing. But you know what? What we want to see, we want to see those two. To, um, 2,500 seats filled. We want to see screaming fans because there is something special you when see, people that in is, the stands. That's the problem, you know. You find most of the people who complain are the ones who don't attend events, you know. So they just talk based on what they mm -hmm. hear, right? Yeah. Because when you look at football and, and, and well, most <laughs> sports, right, a lot of people don't support but no. they always find, you know, you know, you know when <coughs> they support, me. if the athlete does well, yeah, and there's a big ram out session somewhere in the airport or somewhere down in the avenue or somewhere. But you know what? Secret, secret. Mm -hmm. We have athletes who are doing well. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, Andres. Yeah. My, my son gave me Ebola, boy. Yeah. Yeah. The kind of the kind of green cough thing is pick up in a, a daycare is yeah. amazing. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we do have top-class potential Olympians. Mm. We have people who are Olympians on the national cycling team. Jacin Phillip is an immense talent. Um, Nicholas Paul is an immense talent. We have talent. Um, 
Tennille Campbell will most likely be back. Akil Campbell, her brother, will be back. Mm -hmm. Alexi Costa will be back. We have Tenille people. Campbell is doing so well. Amazing, you know, amazing. I'm surprised man. that... Boys Ray is just calling the girl name there, but Tennille... No major but. sponsor has grabbed this child. Yeah, but, you know, it's, 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 she's, she's still at that very um, early stage in her career. Yeah, yeah. Um, we expect to see Tennille doing mm. a lot of damage with international competition. Um, but certainly in September, you could come and see for yourself what yeah. this young woman is capable of. But Dennis, we have certainly run out of time. Yeah, man. Again, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, a pleasure. Yeah. Congratulations on what you're doing. And um, Thanks, viewers, check out Rep868, all your sporting photos and action and news and information. Check Dennis out. He's always there. At, I don't know how he does it, <laughs> but every sporting event, he's most yeah. present. Again, if you miss any part of this program, remember there's a repeat tomorrow at... 1 p.m. or so you can check my YouTube channel. And I want to say again to the supporters, don't just talk or criticize. Go out and support. I'll give you a blight if you go out and support and criticize. But I can't give you no blight if you need support and you're criticizing because it doesn't make sense. So again, um, Dennis, thanks again. Yeah, all man. the best. I know we're going to keep in touch. All day, As all I day. said, remember 868. Yep. Support that page. And all good things have to come to an end. We will see you next week, Tuesday, same time, same channel. We on every Tuesday between the eight hours of eight and nine, where we talk sports. So again, blessings to everybody. Have a productive week ahead, and we see you next week. Mm -hmm.